This session is called Technologies in Agricultural Business, and this is a very topical issue for Russia today. And it is import especially important for small and medium business, which and there is a great potential for development of this business in agriculture. And we will be talking about ways to develop it and opportunities which are there. This is what we wanted to discuss today. We would be talking about the strategy of Russian agricultural business development. I will briefly tell you about myself. I have participated in setting up several companies in cooperation with German consultancy AGT Group, and we have set up several production companies in Russia. So we used to b buy a dilapidated facility, and then we brought it up to a level of cutting edge technology production. Now, I'm not working for this company any longer. I left the company when it became, went from a small time company turned into a largest taxpayer. And it happened in April last year. We start, when we started setting up the company, we used to transport our stuff by buses. And then uh, our employees started to buy their own cars, which indicate improve, improved incomes. And I will be also telling you about agricultural projects when we used to take over ruined facilities and we converted them into profitable farms. And this is the first, the first company which is doing employing precision farming technologies like farm like harvest meters like and other precision technologies and we used to use these technologies through this Eurotechnics company and we also have a project when we rebuilt a hotel a, a four star hotel and we converted a, a ruined building into into a four-star hotel. So we are operating here in Russia. We face the same difficulties. We face corruption issues. But I must say, I've never had a chance to pay bribes because we had to comply with German corporate regulations. And I would say, I would reiterate this idea. It is possible to do business in Russia without paying bribes. And I see some people are smiling here in the audience. And there was time when the former ag agricultural minister did not talk to me, or the agricultural minister of Samara area did not talk to me. They did not see me as a business, as a business lady. But we have been developing our enterprise, and we were turning it into a profitable business. But when we worked on our hotel, that has nothing to do with precision technologies, but anyway just to indicate the approach. You have to fight through certain issues, and it is very time consuming. But when we fight for our rights, and when we don't want to pay bribes, when we want to make a step towards, make a step towards the society when we don't, wouldn't have to pay bribes. So we had to, let's say, build an ark on the territory of our hotel. We spent four years trying to get a permit for this. The idea of our company is promoting energy saving technologies here in Russia. And to foster expansion of these technologies, we have to rethink our agricultural principles. And we will have to bring our agriculture in harmony with nature. And when our officials and agricultural producers and students will say have the same idea about it and the same vision, we will be moving fast. As a Russian proverb saying, we spend a long, t we spend a lot of time to harness a horse, but we are riding really far, really fast. We were supported by big business, and we have many partners. And the idea of our discussion, and 
the, I, the vision of Russian society, actually, is to get to a point where our policy will be based on enhancing productivity of agriculture. And that enhancement should take place in line with natural principles. We should use this God-given potential of producing agricultural products. We should preserve this potential. And we should be in a position to produce competitive comparable in terms in terms of quality comparable products and export them and the key pro the key step in this direction is transfer technologies innovation technologies can help to remove certain hurdles certain hurdles on this on this way like for example soil erosion well this picture does not actually show you the soil erosion and our soil is 60% eroded at the moment. They are they're over flooded in some cases. They have higher salt content. Well, we are trying to keep low profile about this, but we are in fact not taking any measures towards improving this soil and towards preserving its state. Around 60% of our soil is being eroded. So we are losing around 500,000 hectares a year. And that requires tens of trillions of rubles. Just think about how much money it is. Tens of millions of rubles to correct the situation. We have low productivity. And now we, when we have become a part of WTO, we have to compete with German farmers, for example, and they have 2,000 2, hectares with eight people working there. In our case, in the best case scenario, we'll have at least 40. So how can you compete on this basis? Well, look, here is our rating in terms of productivity. We have the lowest productivity as compared to countries who are our main competitors, or in other words, who are agricultural leaders. And we are behind, we are lagging behind these countries big time. Shrinkage and l loss of products. That can be tackled with innovative technologies. We, we lose 45% in the field, 15% in processing, and 45% in transportation. It, for a year, it amounts up to 40 billion rubles. That's a tremendous amount of money that can be saved through employment of in innovational technologies. And also, young people are leaving this uh, industrial agricultural sector. But well, we see that there is a big number of challenges here, but we have a huge agricultural potential. And we need to refocus our economy from producing raw materials. And we should make agriculture the powerhouse of our economy. We should be in a situation when our agriculture will be driving Russian economy forward. We, got, we possess more than 20% of water reserves in the world. We have 10% of world soil, farming soil. What do we need to, to do to reap the benefits of these things? We need a new agricultural policy that would enable us to efficiently use this agricultural potential. So the focus of this policy should be the people, then the planet. We have limited resources big they might be, but they are limited. And profit ranks, profit should be the third focus. In our case, it is vice versa. We have to be building data banks and, oh, in, terms, in terms of technologies. We have to increase biodiversity. And we have to launch different technologies that would help to get more and more knowledge and more technologies in agriculture. One of a good example of it, we have, once I, I sent a letter to Mr. Putin in Ufa, I had the chance to meet, to meet him in Ufa, and with the Minister of Agriculture and with Finance Ministry, we discussed this organizational structure of innovational agricultural centers. 
because we have to diversify our agricultural business. We should not be only about growing crops or growing uh, uh, cows. There should be agricultural tourism. There should be national parks or local areas that have the status of preserved territories. And technology. Which technologies should be employed in, in modern farms? And talking about preserving land resources, there should be different technologies like direct seeding, like voice picking, effective logistics, and effective watering of plants, precision farming technologies, navigational system, a routing system, field routing system, it should be a system for protecting, protecting crops, efficient system of soil sampling, and I'm just mentioning the key technologies that we are now trying to introduce in our innovational centers. We have Natalia Haritonova among our speakers here. And she's got extensive experience in terms of using these technologies in farming. So I would like to give this word to her, and she will tell you about the perspectives of using these innovational technologies in Russian agriculture. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. And my name is Natalia Haritonova. And I actually do not have that much experience, but anyway, I'm, I'm not an expert in agriculture. I am a project manager. So the experience that I've got in recent four and a half years, it was about finalizing projects in Kursk area. So I ran this project for 3.5 years. and. I'm going to tell you in a bit of a more detail about this experience. And this experience makes me, makes me believe in the use of these technologies in practice. I truly believe that intellect and intelligence is one of the success factors. So it is about intelligence of the high-ranking managers who should have a clear picture of who should be doing what. Nobody is trying to look down on people who work in the field on a daily basis. However, clear-cut strategy and clearly made business plan enables you to move forward without unnecessary stops. So choosing the concept. So we have to choose whether we will be going into a di diversified agricultural business and whether we will have a complete operational cycle from growing to selling. That idea emerged in 2009 that included crop growing, cattle farming, and pro product processing. Within three years, we have built an elevator with 440,000 ton capacity. We have commissioned a farm for 1,200 cows, a milk farm, and we have started to use, well, I wouldn't say that is complete innovation, but in 2010, it was a new technology. We purchased, we purchased all necessary equipment for the seed farm, for the milk farm, and for the slaughterhouse. And I truly believe that and by the way, we will not be talking about vegetable growing. So we will be talking about crop farming, and crop farming is the basis of agriculture. At that time, we had 27,000 hectares of land available for farming and more than 150, a fleet of 150 tractors. And we like to talk about innovation and prevalence of technology, but it, w it doesn't work if your personnel, if your labor, if your people are not ready to employ these technologies. 
and he cannot master a, a combined or crop harvester without a proper training. And therefore, we established a training facility. And it was quite a successful project. And uh, today, uh, I s s heard uh, that this is kind of traditional thing uh, across the world. And uh, I believe that uh, uh, setting up s this uh, facility, this uh, training center, uh, was uh, involved in uh, uh, creating it, and, uh, and uh, Amazona was also uh, pr contributing to establishing of this uh, center. And um, when setting up this uh, uh, ag agricultural holding, we had uh, very low costs uh, of, uh, uh, say, fertilizers. And we uh, dis to dispose of uh, our waste uh, was also a separate element of functioning. And the quality improved uh, due to very good uh, uh, equipment used uh, and uh, intensity of labor. And uh, we uh, tried to get rid of dependency from external factors. And I will give you an example of uh, the innovations we introduced. Um, in January 2013, uh, some engineers from uh, Germany had a forum in Hartinwinkel where the uh, assembly factory for uh, tractors uh, operates. And the engineers said that the harvesting technology which we, we used uh, 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 and uh, uh, they were commanded, uh, commanding this uh, methodology. And, the, and uh, they say, uh, our turnover is 8 million rubles a year. And uh, if we count, uh, 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 we had uh, 35 uh, times of downtime for tractors for two, three minutes uh, during harvesting period. But one minute costs 135 uh, rubles. So therefore, uh, you can imagine uh, that uh, by reducing the downtime costs, uh, we significantly improve efficiency. And for 15,000 hectares uh, uh, where we grew uh, grain crops, um, uh, it had a significant effect. And we uh, try to enhance uh, our partnership with the suppliers of agricultural equipment in such a way that uh, we uh, sh have a good idea whom to trust. And we build our collaboration in such a way uh, that uh, we avoid uh, faults uh, of uh, the equipment uh, at our hands. Probably it was quite a bold statement on, on my side, but when we discussed with the dealers uh, uh, during tenders uh, about what kind of comp service company we need to use, I said, you need to send also managers of dealer uh, centers to us uh, on our request. And uh, then we will have a very clear procedure uh, about what shall be done. And I was proud uh, um, to state that we have uh, very good uh, crop, and we even uh, set up, uh, draw a certain a crop map for our agricultural uh, holding, but uh, uh, and uh, this we do regular surveys of the soils we use, and uh, then we feel uh, tangible improvements uh, and uh, uh, increase in efficiency uh, at our uh, holding. During my first year. I already had certain achievements, and uh, uh, though I cannot uh, praise myself, it will be incorrect. But uh, even in the first time, when we started to use the modern technologies, we uh, increased the efficiency in, in harvesting by 22 percent compared to average uh, in the region. Is it a lot, or it is still few? Hard to say, but. Uh, during the first year, we had to s uh, upset the mentality, the mindset of people who lived in uh, the village. 
And uh, it's easy to talk about technologies here in uh, Moscow or in uh, factories where they produce this equipment. But uh, imagine how it was difficult to convince people, not enforce people, but convince uh, farmers and peasants uh, to be careful with the equipment uh, and uh, be frugal and uh, correct approaches, a tactful manner of uh, talking to these people allowed us to uh, achieve a desired outcome. And every worker knew what and uh, he is doing and why he needs to do it this way. So in, and um, I am a firm believer that you cannot uh, f enforce people to do what they don't know and they can't do. And uh, you need to teach them and uh, educate them. Uh, their knowledge of uh, new technologies about novelties which happen in our uh, normal life uh, are become of extreme importance. I heard a lot of comments uh, to my address that uh, it is a waste of time to train these people. And I would uh, retort by the same phrase, by Robert Kiyosaki, if training uh, looks as a very expensive pleasure for you, just count uh, how much ignorance may cost to you. So uh, just several days ago, I returned from Davos, and I participated in the communication of the top, and there I learned something which can become my slogan for this year. It's good, a, a good phrased uh, word is much uh, better than something uh, uh, well done. But Natalia, uh, just, I can also cite Henry Ford. He was a farmer's son. Uh, the, uh, the car maker. He said, a farmer believes in luck and uh, in his uh, predecessors. He has no idea about production and uh, sales. The, but uh, but uh, a producer uh, normally doesn't know about it. But it is uh, surprising that farmers are still profitable. And uh, we uh, actually during the Soviet time, believed that uh, agriculture is a kind of a black hole where capital disappears. But it was so because new technologies were not there. Effective organization of labor provides tremendous uh, impact uh, and outcome. I recall I was the head of a factory, and uh, we built up another enterprise, Salam Salama, and uh, the, our manager, bought his first car 10 years before I could afford to buy a foreign-made car. So uh, profit in agriculture can be gained even quicker than at a factory. But uh, Boris, uh, Boris Runov, he is an academician of uh, Russian Academy of Agricultural Sciences, and he is a professor. What is your take on uh, uh, late uh, Russian strategies in agricultural business. How can you, what will be your recommendation for business, especially in SME segment, because big business has more capabilities? Thank you very much, and uh, good evening. I am so happy to see you, and uh, I believe that this meeting to some extent uh, is an exchange which uh, uh, just creates value by itself and not just uh, trading apples. And um, Ludmila is uh, wrong. Uh, we don't have this Academy of Agriculture in Russia. We see it was abolished uh, quite recently. Don't lag behind the science. Uh, we a Russian uh, Academy of Agricultural Science uh, has been abolished, and uh, it uh, merged with the Russian Academy of Science, uh, a big academy, as we call it. And uh, I represent uh, Russian Academy of Science. But I'll just give you food for thought. And um, it's, uh, I'll speak about global issues. I don't want to deal into the 
with some particular technologies. I just want to give you a upper view on the pre development of agricultural business. Vladimir Putin, our president, said Russian science need to become one of the leading institutions in the development of our society and industry. Very good words. But how to return, reestablish this role? I want to give you one example. For 15 years, I was deputy minister of agriculture of, this, of the Soviet Union and I was in charge of uh, science development and uh, internal relations. And our, during our period, we have we built tremendous uh, cattle breeding farms, uh, and they would produce more than 50 percent of entire meat production in the Soviet Union. Now it is only a few of them remain. Uh, some of them uh, were actually died away. And uh, this reestablishment is going very slow. And our program of national development until 2020 uh, doesn't uh, envision the independence from imported meat. And Russia uh, also is behind in investing in research and development in agriculture. And uh, we are lagging behind US, China, and the European Union. However, uh, uh, even uh, the, the attainments of Russian uh, scientists uh, leave a lot of room for improvement. Uh, now we have, uh, we saw the merger of Russian uh, uh, Academy of Agricultural Science, uh, Russian uh, Academy of Medical Science, uh, they merged with the Russian, uh, all Russia Academy of Science. And we have uh, also an office uh, of uh, Academy Administration, and uh, which the body which uh, actually divides or allocates money for different research. And we uh, they uh, do, uh, they continue uh, accounting of the property of the Russian Academy of Science. And uh, this uh, body, which is called FANO, uh, they uh, continue doing administrative things without actually incentivizing the research and development. And uh, they have took control over. 107 uh, research and development centers. And uh, in, so there will be thousands of uh, other facilities under their control. How can they manage it? I don't know. The, the law doesn't uh, say anything specific about uh, applied sciences uh, and how they will be uh, applied. And uh, we have a lot of inventions which were just shelved long time ago, and nobody is interested in implementing them. There is no mechanism which can accelerate uh, the transition uh, from a product of research and development and implement it into life. And uh, previously, there was a committee on science uh, and uh, regional branches of it. Uh, but uh, currently, there is no body for it. And uh, as for agriculture, I believe we need to test new innovation technologies, and new, uh, say, equipment, and the precise uh, agricultural m uh, mechanisms, uh, biotechnologies uh, need to become uh, most popular. And, uh, uh, advances. Uh, we need to focus on uh, non-traditional sources of energy. Uh, all these areas uh, which are uh, experiencing uh, significant uh, advances in the West uh, uh, are still kind of uh, ignored in Russia. And uh, those recommendations which I saw uh, say that uh, we need 
to follow in the wake of enterprises. And uh, jointly with this product producers, we need to organize, st start uh, projects uh, uh, based on federal uh, f uh, financing. And in Bransk, we have a similar pilot project. And uh, they say that uh, uh, we need to be in the wake of agricultural holdings. Another peculiarity we should be always aware about is the fact that our agricultural business is scattered around the country. It is heavily dependent on the climate, and we agriculture by nature works with living organisms. And plowing soil, we we stop employing the plowing technologies like in Europe, for example, they start direct uh, plowing more. And as far as international, oh sorry, informational technologies are concerned, here we have a picture of Krasnodar area. And Krasnodar, Krasnodar area is the pilot area for harvesting, harvest measuring system project. And Two people have already made this point, and they said that precise, precise farming is one of the major areas of development of agricultural production, because it improves productivity and it speeds up the process. Unfortunately, we do not have equipment for this precise farming concept, and we have to use imported equipment like navigational systems or harvesting machines. Um, I frequently visit China and Ch Chinese people, they are squeezed for land and they have more than one billion people living in China. So they have 10 times less land and 10 times more people. And they are currently developing technologies for use of solar power, and they are building up automated vertical greenhouses. We actually can use the same technologies here in Russia. So that's a fully automated greenhouse. You put seeds into it, and you get ready-made vegetables. And this is a slide that comes from the Japanese presentation. Japanese people are very good in tracking the quality of product from the point of harvesting to the point of being cooked and served to the table. And they use computer systems, and you can use the system to find out when the crop was grown and how it got to the market. So these are the areas which are good for our agriculture. But I would also like to say that Science might ask you for a dollar, but introduction of or deployment of an idea costs a lot more, costs 100 times more. So when we do, and in case when we don't have a mechanism that will let us to speed up the process, then we face a trouble. And it is quite difficult to get new idea into life because we get contacted by many people who say, well, here is a new and good idea, and he comes it to an official. And an official, like me, for example, would say, that idea is worthless. Then he comes to me again. Then I take a closer look at it and say, well, actually, it might work. Then, then he comes the, for the third time. So that's the way the science evolves. So it, it is quite difficult to go forward, but it is impossible to set up proper production without science. Thank you. Thank you, Boris Alexandrovich. You, you always promote new technologies. So it is absolutely impossible to develop agriculture without employing innovational technologies. And you just mentioned the project in Bryansk and this is the system is well developed developed all over in the world like for example i attended a conference in australia and there is a farming association there these farmers pay the membership fees and also part of this farmer association 
is research institutions and the think tanks and the farmers come up with the problems they want to get resolved by the think tanks and they it costs around 160 million dollars well not a single innovation technologist has been has been deployed without governmental support it's merely impossible to do that and it is quite difficult so state support is instrumental in development of agriculture I also wanted to make a point. Unfortunately, if you take agriculture, then you would notice that this branch of industry is quite scary for young people, simply because it's, it doesn't have a very high profile and it is not that much interesting. So people are not motivated to go there and it doesn't give you a quick result. So doesn't give you a quick result like for example if you take big companies and big farms they structure their business in line with all business rules however small and medium businesses they still structure their business and they manage their business without any innovation technologies so they do it in a very obsolete way and there must be an effort paid to break this mentality. And th that should be a joint effort from the business side and from the mass media side. So specialized editions, which can, in an affordable way, deliver these ideas to small and medium businesses should be quite valuable. I just wanted to give you one phrase. You probably. There is a renowned economist whose name is Samuelson, and he said, agriculture is a kid of nature, but it, was, it, will always, it will always be adopted. This kid will always be adopted by the government, and it will be cherished by the government. And he was saying this about agriculture in America. And ag agricultural sector is the, cherish, is the cherished child of American government, because the margin in that business is two times more than in arms sales, for example. Well, before we talk about precise farming, and Olga Krusanova will be telling us about precise farming. But before I do that, I wanted to tell you that I visited one farm in Australia and they were using the special fertilizer and special crop protection system. And those systems produced a revolution in agriculture. But in Russia, there are only two or one or two units like this. And that, that that technology helps you save money because it if if your field is clean from if your field is clean from other crops which which are unwanted you don't need to clean it again and those chemicals which are used in field cleaning are very expensive and also by not using them you preserve the environment so why aren't we using this technology in russia well, at least you need to spend two years to, to, tr to know how to use the system. Olga, please, the floor is yours. How do you cope with these problems? Good evening, dear friends and dear colleagues. Um, I'm a bit excited because Boris and Ludmila have touched upon a very sensitive subject for me because I'm, I'm quite young, but these issues are very, very close to me. So I'm only working in Russian business. I have been working in Russian business for eight years, and we are currently working on developing sales of various innovation technologies, which help to better manage field operations, which help save time and enhance productivity. GLONASS and GPS technologies for beautiful agriculture. 
thank God that agriculture starts developing at a higher pace in recent years. And it is nice to see that the importance of it is recognized by the state and the state is granting its support. And investors are also getting interested in our agriculture. And if the world goes up in flames and if we will have to build everything from scratch again, then agriculture will be the first thing that we will start doing because it's about producing food. My company is called Telematica Leader, and the head office is based in Lipetsk, and we have been operating in this market for eight years now. And my job is about introducing various types of navigational equipment, they, uh, which, is ba which is based on GLONASS or GPS signals. So these navigate, navigation devices, they help to navigate or help to drive a tractor. That's the minimum. That's at least you. You must at least have this thing to start this precise farming technology. Natalia visited our site some time ago, so she witnessed the very beginning of our company, the time when we emerged. So we will, we, in future, we are planning to employ the technology with integrated fertilizing. And the market for this product changed significantly. And as you can see, all these devices look differently. They have different functionality depending on the type of the device. And it provides you with different precision options from zero to 35 centimeters. They are, these devices are based on the following principles. So uh, it's quite simple to start with, but each of these devices is, um, is using the patented technology, which helps to, to maintain precision. And so when this device is placed in a tractor, that device contacts a satellite and requests its position as compared to the previous position. So, and it helps you, it helps you build, keep your lines straight. Thanks to these devices and thanks to its functionalities, the tractor driver can move its tractor both backwards and forward, and he can still maintain precision. It gives you an option to farm those, to harvest and farm those lands which were not accessible before. So it gives you an option to expand your farming lands, and if this land is pro properly fertilized and properly treated, then you will be harvesting a completely different amount of uh, crops and you will be getting bigger profits. As you can see here on the chart, these are extra devices which are also used in the system and they help the tractor driver to drive the tractor in a straight line. It is basically using the same thing as using a navigator. Sometimes when you use a navigator, you can miss a turn. However, this, these, the, the system also helps to steer. It has a steering device connected to the navigator, and it helps the tractor driver to steer the tractor in a straight way. Several models of these navigators, they have a specific functionality like paid satellite signal. You, you know that there are other satellites apart from GPS and GLONASS, apart from GLONASS and GPS satellites, there are Japanese satellites, European satellites, and so that dictates the fact that the precision of these navigators might vary. So this paid satellite signal uh, system, it helps you to, again, to monitor your precision. Like, for example, in planting certain types of crops, you must m 
you must maintain precise position in relation to your previous position. And for example, if a tractor loses a signal, then the signal has to be restored. And, but this uh, functionality can be toggled on or toggled off. For example, in season, you can have it on and then you can turn it off. So em employment of these technologies helps you to save seeds because you do not plant more seeds than you actually need. You save your fuel and you save fertilizers because if a tractor is fully fitted with these navigation systems and if these systems are fully functional, then you can, you can make seeding at night, for example. And there, are, there are certain types of crops which shall only be seeded at night. And it is quite difficult to do, to do this night work because people working at night are liable for making mistakes. And those mistakes, as time goes by, might impact your profit. Should you be interested in these products, we, I would like to refer you to our website, agrogps.ru, and there is a calculator there which you can use if you input your parameters into the calculator, like the crop you harvest or the number of hectares or some other parameters that calculator will come up with the potential saving that you will that you will have if you use if you start using this technology and you will see the difference among these two figures i'm very glad actually to have a chance to speak in front of you today and we can exchange contacts so thank you very much for your attention however agriculture mean not only is about field technologies, but it is also about clean construction technologies because agricultural companies do a lot of construction works as well. They're building offices, they're building storage facilities and shop works, wo workshops. So we also have to keep in mind an option of clean environmental construction. So we should not use obsolete technologies. We should employ new construction, modern construction technologies here. And we have Konstantin Sergeyevich Zungasov here, who is the head of catalytic heating company. I'm Con my name is Konstantin, and I am the head of EcoCat company. Well, it, it turned out that I already know all these speakers who sit at this table and we are glad to offer you a new heating technology which can help you to reduce your heating cost three or four times. So the point of this technology is this. Please take a look at the chart. Ministry of Economic Development is stating that 88% of energy is produced here in Russia by means of burning fossil fuels. So we use heat exchangers after we produce energy. The point of a heat exchanger is to separate heat from smoke, and smoke is siphoned away through the funnel or through the chimney. And in our case, we used catalyt catalytic materials or catalysts. And those catalysts react with the product of burning the fossil fuel. So whatever is burned, it, it gets reacted with the catalyst and is fed into the in, in, into the heated building. So that technology is employed in pig farming, but but that also that also requires ventilation system. Like for example, you have a hundred hundred cubic meters of a building, then you have to get three hundred cubic meters of air 
there. So when you air this building, then you face the 75% loss of heat in this building. So this catalytic, catalytic heating, we produce only catalytic materials and we buy the missing bits of equipment in the market. So when you use the catalytic materials, it helps you to do away with the heat exchangers. You don't need a heat exchanger, you don't need um, ventilation. And the efficient co productivity coefficient becomes closer to 100%. Our equipment was has been used for eight years already by many industrial companies. More, more than 50 units are currently operational. So we believe this is, this is a substantial figure. So we know that it works. There is no doubt about it. We have various units of various capacity, like two kilo, kilowatts, 10 kilowatts, we are capable of producing megawatt capacity units, which will be working either on gas or on diesel fuel. And we talked about the fact that it can increase, improve your efficiency by 10, 20, or 30 percent. In our case, it's two or threefold improvement. In Kaluskaya area, cucumber costs up to 100, 100 uh, rubles a kilo. And the share of the share of heat cost in in this figure is about six or ten percent. So if you reduce it, you can calculate how much profit you can get. So here is a table that shows you the variance when using our heating unit and not using it. Uh, and um, you see the parameters of it on the slide. Our office uh, at uh, the Zeal. Uh, plant uh, and there in uh, green Russian uh, yards uh, the uh, con concentration of CO is around 1.5 ppm and uh, we believe that our uh, uh, shops uh, have a pure uh, quality of air and uh, when we talk about internal innovation, I can state that our company is a classic venture company. And we had an invention, which is the core of our activity. I am also a member of uh, Academy of Science. And uh, we created this company with the uh, academic institution, we received the money from the budget, it's around $200,000, and we produce uh, uh, commodities, and uh, which uh, have uh, no equal uh, anywhere in uh, Russia or in China or in Europe. And this is uh, one of the examples that you should not uh, just uh, focus on uh, foreign-made uh, issues, but uh, look for uh, growth uh, points in Russia. And uh, I believe that we will have another two, three companies uh, uh, established around uh, our production. And Vnesh Econom Bank also promised to uh, fund uh, our activities and uh, we believe that uh, this kind of uh, invention can be applied in different settings, in farmers and uh, shops and uh, in greenhouses. And we also have some project for our defense industry, uh, for uh, heat premises uh, by using gas or diesel fuel. Uh, very good. Uh, thank you very much, Sergey, for your uh, explanation and presentation. Boris Alexandrovich, you also spoke about it, that we need mechanism to translate technology into life. And we discussed uh, setting up so-called innovation uh, companies. Uh, and uh, this is what our uh, authorities are waiting from us. But what is the way to s establish this? Uh, 
enterprises, and is there a need for them? First of all, the Minister of Agriculture should reestablish the department of related to Uh, what we in English call extension services. So it should be a body which will learn what and where uh, there are good practices and then replicate them across the country. There used to be an, a department like this. It, it, it was abolished. And every entrepreneur which uh, has achieved something will cannot invest it into uh, establishing its uh, a competitor. So the state should take this uh, issue in its own hands. And there should be some small uh, but exemplary centers where we can show, in China they have it, uh, how these things can be implemented. The farmers don't believe it until they touch it. So, and they see how these vegetables grow, but there should be some promotion centers for advanced technologies. Natalia, your comment on this. I'm completely convinced that Russians, if we talk about Russia, should uh, uh, learn things in Russia. And uh, we can save a lot of money if, my, if uh, those... Uh, Trans money, uh, investments into sending Russian farmers to the Netherlands or to Denmark, uh, uh, it's a waste of time. We can actually open training centers here uh, in proximity to uh, their own uh, place of abode. And, uh, we understand that uh, new technologies sometimes are kind of concealed. And uh, that's wrong, because you can conceal your balance. Uh, your, but uh, still, uh, the latest technologies should not be kept secret. And, uh, and uh, we need also to uh, exert special efforts to replicate it. And, uh, Talking about the agricultural equipment, this 12-meter wide-range uh, cropping uh, co combines, uh, harvesters, uh, are the latest uh, advances which need to be implemented in Russian agriculture. And you cannot actually uh, teach uh, Russians uh, to use this equipment in the Netherlands. They don't have fields this wide. Therefore, I don't want to criticize anybody, but uh, at the same time, we still have intellectual resources, facilities, which can integrate or initiate uh, setting up such, such exemplary farms. Olga, your opinion? First of all, I support uh, all opinions which I heard. And in the top of it, I would like to add um, my opinion uh, on my narrow uh, area of operation. And uh, uh, yes, uh, just these uh, operators of this equipment should not be obligated to maintain and uh, uh, repair this equipment. And in Novolipetsk, we have a uh, a uh, huge uh, metallurgical uh, combine. And if uh, you see it uh, becomes bankrupt one day, nobody will reestablish it. And there, historically, from generation to generation, skill pass. And uh, when we speak about those uh, GPS technologies in our country, uh, and when I started to address these issues, then I learned that uh, we have some uh, hole uh, uh, on uh, some gap between uh, what uh, in what the state can contribute to it and in russia we still can um, improve the agriculture i went traveled to the us to see the uh, agricultural uh, developments i was so happy to see the advances but uh, somehow it was kind of sad for me uh, and why the progress is so slow i believe that 
In the coming years, new investments and new uh, centers for latest technologies will be open in Russia. I agree with Natalia. Our experience also proves that we need to establish this uh, exemplary centers uh, for innovations and latest technologies. And, uh, and uh, uh, we are well, s kind of uh, such center, and we have agreements uh, with the Ministry of Agriculture. But uh, people uh, don't understand how it can work. Therefore, we are ready to establish, to just uh, replicate, to, to supply this equipment, and uh, even uh, make uh, governors interested in it. And uh, I'm sure they will provide funding to uh, implementing this uh, technology in their regions. And uh, there is an international practice. Uh, researchers uh, do something in pharmaceutical industry, for instance. But then uh, there should be a company, a startup, which uh, uh, improves technology. And then a big farmer buys it. And uh, Andrei Ivashenko actually received the order from Bayer to develop uh, uh, HIV drug. And uh, Bayer will sell it once he designs it. Uh, our company will sell it here in Russia. And uh, Bayer will sell it abroad. And th therefore, uh, I can share it with you. We have a classic venture company. And we are the first in Russia uh, on the basis of 200, uh, law 216. Uh, we work in collaboration with the Russian Academy of Science, but 95% of the investments uh, are actually focused on IT and the internet, not the real sector. Well, I also went to our ministry and uh, spoke in uh, setting up this innovation farms uh, in all Russian districts, uh, um, like training centers. And I tell you about the, what happened with my letter. And I am doing it myself. I, once I earn money, I invest it into my farm and uh, agricultural center, three and a half thousand hectares. And uh, we use all these uh, above mentioned technologies and we have some uh, bio reserve there, and uh, we are completing the uh, township uh, for our employees, and um, and we believe that we can come to uh, say the turnover, uh, and with including the uh, uh, say 160 million rubles in profits uh, if we add to. Um, seed uh, growing, uh, also uh, the diary, or we can add a fish uh, farm to it, and, to we, and uh, leaving aside the agricultural tourism. Just by using this energy-saving technologies. And uh, I believe that in, in Russia, even uh, in the uh, it's agricultural areas, we can uh, spend uh, 130 billion uh, rubles less uh, because this money comes uh, from the federal budget. Uh, and uh, we can save uh, more than 200 billion rubles annually by saving uh, the, uh, the soils and lubricants, uh, the mineral fertilizers and seeds. Uh, thanks to advanced technologies. And uh, this is, these are my calculations. And we can avoid wastes, uh, uh, 40 billion, uh, which I spoke about uh, previously. So this farm innovation center uh, was set up in the Samara region. And we have a site, a portal, and we select all interna best international practices there to disseminate them. And we are trying to cooperate with different public associations. And this for the first time, we introduced this project to uh, President Putin several years ago. 
we uh, have good relations with local authorities uh, and uh, we demonstrate our achievements in technology but we are still a small organization uh, but we are looking uh, a union uh, which will influence the agricultural policy which can uh, prompt uh, the Ministry of Agriculture to have this extension service uh, uh, facility, uh, which exists everywhere in, across the world and uh, in our competitors. In Australia, I recall, our delegation was accompanied by consultants from the Ministry of Agriculture of Germany, and they would speak in details about all technology w they used and disseminated there. Australia. It's not uh, big as Russia, but they have everything. And they have even their own machine building. And, uh, and everything is focused on introducing the latest technologies. The farmers, they don't hide the, uh, you see, accounting, because uh, here we need to sometimes to conceal. And they can openly say about all the expenses, uh, what is this, uh, consumption of uh, POL and uh, brokers and uh, uh, transportation costs, all costs are open. But uh, here in Russia, you can never get the statistics. It's kind of commercial secret. And the request was to show, to return the slide. Look at it. This is the our site and the last thing to show you just give me a minute uh, I'll show you a video uh, what what future expects us it doesn't run unfortunately I cannot run this video but in general but it's sad that uh, the agriculture will use robots soon, and uh, I, this is what I wanted to show you. And uh, our equipment uh, there was used. Uh, uh, sorry for not to be uh, able to show it to you, but at Hanover uh, trade show, uh, this video was uh, produced, uh, and and uh, or you can uh, just uh, go to Ebra practica uh, that are you and you'll see uh, how this equipment uh, works and uh, it's a future of oh this uh, video and it is such an exciting topic and for the young people it should be very attractive and interesting to work in uh, uh, agriculture we need to promote its image and uh, in Rostov on Don, we demonstrated the latest technology in the GP, GPS uh, th systems uh, integrated. People were surprised, but navigation is, and uh, GPS uh, uh, link uh, with the space uh, should be something which is taught in the agricultural academies and uh, at the courses um, of uh, advanced training for agricultural experts. Uh, and now we are ready to start a Q&A session. Good afternoon, dear colleagues. My name is Lev Schwarzenberg, and I'm the beginning farmer from, Kazakh, from Tatarstan. A question to Boris Alexandrovich and Ludmila. These technologies, they possess great value, but I have a more topical issue. Why do we keep talking about fertilizers and chemicals? The chemicals is not something that actually does a lot of good to, to soil. There are biotechnologies available which do not employ chemicals. And I wanted to ask a question whether, whether you know about these technologies like, for example, setting up spe special canals that provide fertilizers. Well, I'm not aware of that particular technology. However, I know that each country currently has its clean products, clean agricultural products. Clean agricultural products are cheap, are more expensive 
than ordinary products and chemicals are not used in farming clean products. And fertilizing is made by means of using manure. These products are just more expensive. The technology that I'm talking about, it's, it is based on bio, biotechnologies and it is very cheap. And it was used in a large industrial scale in agriculture. So this technology can be effectively used in a big country. So why do we keep talking about f using chemical fertilizers? Are you spreading the knowledge about available biological technologies? We're actually not talking about using fertilizers. We are talking about reducing the share of chemical fertilizers. You will have to use fer chemical fertilizers anyway. You cannot transfer a country in one go on using biotechnology. But you're right, we should focus on biotechnologies. You're totally right, I agree. Good afternoon. My name is Oleg Miladze and I'm from Vorkuta. I'm a sm small entrepreneur. So two questions. We have a situation in our area. So we, we are investing funds into development of agriculture and we are helping those who want to go into this agricultural area. And we faced the following problem. So business is developing up to a certain extent, and then business people ask themselves a question. To get profit, you have to use these innovational technologies. So the question is, where is this threshold? When do we have to start using these technologies? For example, in, when you harvest certain crops, you have to fertilize soil, use fertilizers. But currently, I'm talking about growing pigs. So which biological additives we should use to ensure that our pigs grow faster and they bring us profit? Because if we just use biological materials, it, it stops from being pro it, it, it stops being profitable. Natalia, I actually didn't know that you are taking part in this discussion, but from 2009, we have, we were watching your agri agricultural complex developing. So, can you give us an advice as to where we can find investment, where, where a small-time agricultural producer can find investment. Because your project required four or five billion ruble investment, right? So we, we would like to talk about this project, but the money is not available. Well, let me answer the second part of your question first. In January 2013, I left that company, and I left the company after it started making profit, because my mission was about setting up it as a startup. So, and as far as investment is concerned, yes, this is a very capital-consuming business. We used loans from banks and we used our own f funds. Um, I'm not actually aware what kind of financing, financing you require. So, and if you see yourself as the head of the company, as, as the owner of the company, then you need to understand that you have to make investment into processing if you want to sell a ready-made product. If you are talking about a small-time farm, like 10,000 hectares, it's not a lot. 
So in this case, I would like to draw your attention to the fact that Ross Selhos Bank or Russian Agricultural Bank has got several programs related to financing farms and Ross Agro Leasing has got several programs related to support of agricultural producers. Uh, I urge you to go to their website and take a look at what is available there. And Ludmila Vladimirovna is using these Ross Agro Leasing tools as well. Ross Agro Leasing is the most e effective and the most efficient structure in terms of providing support at the moment. I'm an investor, actually, and we have invested about 10 million rubles into a farm. And the farm is operating, and it is about growing. It's a pig farm. But trying to source finance elsewhere, we faced the following problem. Well, our farm is located further to the north, and so there are few banks available there. You are you operate in Kursk area. I was there once. I was there. It's cool, and I think that you are giving a good example. For example, you can. You can buy a picture for $50 million because you want to use it as an investment tool, or you can buy a picture simply because you like it. We have used this example because it was a successful example, and that project was not only about getting profit, it was about the exchange of experience, it was about training new people. So it's like an ideal farm. We wanted to create a farm, and I believe we succeeded in it. And so, but even more so, we wanted to, to create a vertically integrated complex. So we had this idea in 2009. And in 2009 was the time after the crisis. And the was investment into agricultural business was out of question. So in 2009, when we developed this idea, we also thought that it might become a basis for integrating or bringing together our experience. Because various areas of the Russian Federation were interested, like Dagestan or Mari El. And and we now provide consultant consultancy service to foreigners who want to invest into Russian agriculture and they want to be protected from other factors. Zambia. Uh, and uh, I realize there's been a lot of talk about uh, Russia. I thought this is a global forum. So what we're looking at uh, is uh, what are the technologies and uh, innovations that are on the market uh, for the possibilities of, uh, for example, us coming from Africa to, to take in. But also I'd like to mention that uh, uh, as a company and uh, the project we've been involved in uh, managing a program for capacity building for small uh, and medium enterprises in, in developing the agro-dealer network uh, in terms of business uh, development and technical training. Now, uh, during the discussion, uh, the Olga there, she spoke about uh, the GPS technology and uh, the use with the, with the tractor, but I, I didn't hear her speak about uh, saving uh, fertilizer by way of using the GPS technology in terms of soil testing, sam sampling, so that uh, these farmers, by the time they buy inputs, they should be able to buy the right for inputs. I, I thought that uh, is very, very important. But also there's been a discussion that uh, there was some time 
very effective extension which has been cancelled. Uh, but uh, having said that, uh, we also had a similar situation in Zambia. Some years back, uh, actually we had uh, zonal research stations which provided uh, appropriate research and guidance to farmers, but also we had uh, what was called uh, the community-based uh, farmers training uh, centers, which uh, after the liberalization of the economy, we saw government running away from there. So what we saw was uh, the new workshops for technocrats and not farmers. And you realize that if you want to develop farming, you need to build capacity for the actual farmer because it's the farmer that uh, do the business of agriculture. The, 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 the public sector employees, they will discuss it and that it will end on policy. So having said that, I would like also to share that uh, we have uh, in Zambia a very effective research institution called um, Golden Valley. Golden Valley Trust uh, has been very instrumental in research for seed development and of course they use a uh, few days as a way of uh, teaching various sectors. So that kind of a model is very, very important. But also I'd like to mention that um, uh, I think innovation, integration of innovation of technologies is very important. Uh, Olga showed a lot of technologies. So I think all what we need to do is how do we integrate the certain, the different technologies to apply them so that at the end of the day, the farmer is able to achieve that precision farming because precision farming is about making your production quite cost effective and profitable. So I think uh, I'd like to just encourage the, the, the panel that uh, I think it's important that there is a way of uh, engagement between government and of course the private sector in the way I'm happy the, uh, the chair lady there She's uh, taken very, very effective uh, model in the facility they've set up. So I, I thought I should just share those uh, comments. Thank you. Olga, do you want to answer? So thank you, thank you very much for your comment. It was valuable comment and it was interesting to listen to what can be done in other countries in terms of agricultural development and I must say I have not focused on this using precision technologies in fertilizing of soil and there is a reason to that two years ago we started to focus on very very small farmers and they have fields starting from 100 hectares. These farmers also need support, and they, these are the people who, who are unable to get credit and source financing. They want to develop their business, they want to expand their land, but at a certain point in time, they have to start with something. And my company is exactly about supporting these people. This is why we focused more on specific types of equipment that which helps them to drive straight, drive a tra tractor straight down the field. And as far as training is concerned, yes, it, you have to train people to use it, but in the end of the day, it becomes as simple as just using a mobile phone. Yes, educating farmers is a long-term project and you need to take people's mentality into account because in some cases those tractor drivers, they do not want to use this innovation. They want to keep driving in the way their fathers and grandfathers used to drive a tractor. So that requires time, I would say. And also last year we have a delegation from Mali, they visited several of our farms and we demonstrated our potato fields to them. And this year they demonstrated their results. They have developed their watering technology. They are employing innovational technologies. I was astonished to see their progress. So we are actively cooperating with African countries as well. And there was a conference in Kenya and it was about pres land preserving farming. And 
It was attended by ministers, by agricultural ministers of neighboring countries. So it, th that shows you the importance of new technologies. I think we have run out of time. Or we can take we can take another question. Vladimir Klinkov, I'm from Minsk, and I'm, we are also providing precision farming technologies. In North America, this navigational equipment is an instrumental component of precise farming. So my question is to Natalia. You said that you have the harvest monitoring system. And and you build your harvest harvesting maps. Do you use any other technologies, like, for example, satellite imaging? We use autopiloting. We use GLONASS and GPS systems. But these are the systems which we had by default. We had these modules installed when we bought, when we in fact ordered those tractors. And we, there were only two satellite network operators and it was not enough for us. So we installed the communication, communication station, which, which gave us two or three centimeter error unlike 30 or 40 centimeter error as before yes we had we we employed agro uh, we employed chemical analysis of soil we we built the harvesting maps so the experience that we have and by the way there is another point to be noted here when you have funds, never mind whether it is your own funds or credit funds. It is easy to go on with the project, but it is only, it is it only seems to be easy because on the other hand, a lot depends on the way the project is managed and a lot depends on the people who drive this project forward. If you have money, you can spend 10 years on a single project. And as I told you in my presentation, I judged the results. I judged the result of my work by the number of companies that we started. So it is very important what you just said. And so you cannot be amateur in agriculture. So I'm delighted to see all those young people who have interest in agricultural business. And I see there is a trend to getting immersed into this section. I would like to add a couple of words. Those people who want to go into this business, who want, who want to start using precise farming technologies, they need to take into account the fact that satellite imaging and aerial photography, they are very different in cost. And currently, you, it is a lot better to use unmanned aerial vehicles, UAVs, and some of our institutions have 10 or 15 UAVs. And you give an immediate result, and it is a lot cheaper. You don't have to wait. You don't have to pay big money, and you don't have to wait for satellite images. And also, another thing I wanted to say, we used field maps and those field maps that we provided to our tractor drivers, they help to structure their logistics. And we have improved our road maps. Well, unfortunately, we have run out of our time. Can we take another question? What is the role of local farmers in developing these agricultural technologies? And what, what is your take on 
African countries in this respect. We have to get more young people into this branch of business. We have to get these people involved. So we have to demonstrate the innovations that can be used in agriculture. So we need to avoid the situation when young people think that they will have to operate a plow and a tractor. So a lot of things can be changed in our educational system, and this is what we discussed today. There is a need in changing the governmental programs. There is a need to enhance the image of an agricultural worker. Like in America, a farmer is a very important man. We need to get, to get into the same situation. And a lot of things have to be done, but but we've got to do it. Now we have Crimea in our, amongst our land, and all sorts of embargoes are promised to be introduced against Russia. So our only challenge is to develop our own agriculture. Our country is rich. We have a lot of money. So we have to spend this money expediently. Also, I want to add another point. I had the chance to meet students in Kursk institution, agricultural institution, and I had the chance to talk with the director of specialized educational institutions. It is quite difficult to motivate young people. And I had to, to have, I had to hold two, three, or even four sessions in order to be able to face these students and invite them to come to our farm just for an internship. I was interested in giving this information to them because they should have got this information whilst they were still open to perceiving new ideas. And apart from that, we have also employed an unconventional approach we had contests, various con contests related to agriculture. Like, for example, there was a contest for who draws a better horse. And we also had to manage a horse farm. So we were filming some events. So we were trying to engage the young people into some activity which will be interesting for them. This is a very important issue. And I have 20 people working in my sales team. And these people, are, on a daily basis, they meet uh, their customers. And the oldest guy in the sales department is 28 years old and the youngest one is 20. So when we work together with our farmers and agricultural producers, so they see young people in front of them, and they see young people who are talking about serious things and innovational technologies, and we can see that there is these young people, they set a very good example. So, and then by means of grapevine conversations, this inf information spreads in the community. And the, the farmers start saying that young people are going into our business. And we also had a meeting with uh, Michurinsky and Voronezhsky Voron Institution students. And they were motivated to come for internship. And we had the chance to show that this is a profitable business. and. So they were getting the, they got their salary, and it cha I must say it changed their perception. And I think as time goes by, we will see more and more young people in agricultural business, by all means. So I would like to thank you for your presentations. I would like to thank you also for the questions that you asked. And I wish you have success in developing your business and in introducing innovations in agriculture.